Hello everyone, welcome to episode 40 of the Card Combo Show with me, Chocobilly, where I look at the weird and wonderful card combinations in the Final Fantasy TCG. Make sure to like and subscribe, and this week I'm going to be looking at, and it's a special special, let's call it. <laughs> um, so, Sid from Opus 1, Garnet from Opus 3, Red 13 from Opus 11, Varn from Opus 10, and Biggs from Opus 1, so you'll notice that they're all from starter decks. So, first and foremost, we've got Sid Reigns, 2 CP, 5k. When Sid Reigns enters the field, choose a 1 Dull Forward your opponent controls. Deal it 4,000 damage. When it is put from the field into the break zone this turn, your opponent discards one card from their hand. So, it's important to note that that is a static effect as well. So, if Sid Reigns leaves the field, gets put into the break zone, or just returns to your hand, that effect will still remain. So, you play Sid Reigns to deal 4,000 damage to a forward, and then Sid Reigns dies for whatever reason. Uh, and then you manage to break that forward anyway, your opponent still discards a card. So Une obviously is a great play. Uh, you cast a summon, you get to flick a Sid Reigns and deal 4,000 damage to something. So let's say your opponent's got a dial up for uh, AK forward, you deal 4k with Sid Reigns, you cast a summon to flick a Sid Reigns, you have killed your opponent's forward, and you have made them discard two cards because the effect can stack. Um, so yeah, that's just really, really good. Now, obviously, your opponent may have um, some way of keeping it alive, but using Hades, choose one dull forward, break it. The owner of the forward discards one card from his or her hand. So you'll have two Sid Reigns stacks because it will go Sid Reigns. You cast Hades, which will use Une to then flicker Sid Reigns. Sid Reigns will come back down again, which will deal a further 4k and again apply the effect that if that forward leaves the field, or sorry, if the forward's put into the break zone, the opponent discards a card and then Hades will take effect, which when it will break the forward, so, you know, you could do this on a 10k forward as well. Um, at which point your opponent has to, just, eh, has to discard again. So, you're making your opponent discard three cards from casting just Sid Reigns and Hades with Une on the field. And you break one of their forwards. Pretty cool. Phoenix, again, are a decent play as well. So, I mean, this is fairly obvious anyway. Uh, and an age-old play. But your opponent attacks with a forward. You cast Phoenix. You bring in Sid Reigns. He'll be standing up. So, you'll be able to block with him. And, obviously, if your opponent provided the forward didn't have Brave, it should be dull when it attacked. So, Sid Reigns will come in, deal at 4k. can block with it. Sid Reigns gets put into the break zone. Your opponent will make... Well, or... Uh, you will break your opponent's forward, which means your opponent will have to discard, and obviously Sid Reigns, plus the 2k damage from Phoenix as well, it's pretty good. Puck. When Puck enters the field, choose one forward of cost 1 in your break zone, play it onto the field. And at damage 3, when Puck enters your field, choose one forward of cost 2 in your break zone, play it onto the field. So obviously to be able to play Sid Reigns, you need to be at damage 3, but if you combine that with the likes of, say, Vivi, it means that Vivi will come in and deal either 2,000, 7,000, or 10,000 to a forward opponent controls, but then you can also have Sid Reigns come in and deal 4k and hopefully make your opponent discard as well. So, as if you're at damage 3, then obviously Sid Reigns and Vivi will enter at the same point, at which point you get to choose how the effects, effects stack. So, you'd want to have it so that Sid Reigns stacks um, second. So, it goes Vivi then Sid Reigns, that means Sid Reigns will resolve first, at which point Vivi can then finish it off, and, you know, your opponent discards. Uh, what's good about this is the fact that when you bring Vivi onto the field, um, obviously it's dependent on how many nine characters you control. So when Vivi enters the field, choose one forward, your opponent controls, deal it 2,000 damage. If you control four or more category nine characters, deal it 7,000 damage. So 7,000 plus Sid Reigns' 4,000 damage is 11,000, so that's enough to kill most forwards. Um, What's good though is the fact that Vivi does count himself and he will also count Puck. So you only need two nine characters on the field prior to playing Puck into Vivi to be able to get the 7k. Shara as well. So Shara deals a little bit less. Uh, it does require Ritz to be able to deal 6k damage, but she has standard deals 3, which is a little bit more than Vivi. And the 3 plus Sid Reigns is 4 is 7k, which is enough to kill a lot of forwards out there. Shara. Uh, I just said Shara. Zack. Uh, at the end of your t each of your turns, choose one forward. Your opponent controls it. Discard one card from your hand. If you do so, deal up 5,000 damage. So you play Puck into Sid Reigns and Zack. You then do go to pass your turn. You get to discard a card and you'll deal 5k to the forward that Sid Reigns damaged, at which point your opponent then has to discard. Now you're discarding this ability as well, but if it gets rid of a forward, and that will be a total of 9k damage dealt, that's pretty good. And again, you're kind of keeping it level because even though you're discarding, so is your opponent. 
Crow. When Crow is put from the field to the break zone, choose one forward in your break zone. Add it to your hand. Dull. Put Crow into the break zone. Choose one forward. Dull it. So the good thing about this is obviously you are setting up for Sid Reigns. So you're using Crow to get Sid Reigns back to your hand and then you're also dulling a forward opponent controls. You could then cast Sid Reigns and hopefully kill that forward or combo that into something else to then, you know, kill it and make your opponent discard. Ally. So when one or more dull backups you controls activate now, nah, don't care about that. Uh, when your opponent discards one or more cards uh, from their hand due to your summons or abilities, choose one character, dull it and freeze it. So this combo with Sid Reigns is quite nice because you get to break one of your opponent's forwards, you get to make them discard, and then you also get to dull and freeze something else as well. Right, secondly, Garnet. Now, this is the least played Garnet of all the Garnets. Now, when Garnet enters the field, you may search for one water summon of cost two or less and cast it without paying the cost. If you do not cast it, put it, uh, put the summon into the break zone. She is a 3 CP 5k, so she's a, a fair ways over cost, but the fact that she searches and plays the summon is really good. So Bismarck, Bismarck's a great summon and it's modal, so you can choose one monster, return, to his own uh, return it to its owner's hand, Choose one character you control, return it to your to its owner's hand, so you can choose one of your backups and return it as well, which is pretty good. Or choose one forward half its power until the end of the turn. And, you know, they're all three fairly decent abilities. Kuchelain the Impure. So choose one forward, it loses all the abilities until the end of the turn, draw one card. So that is recurring some of Garnet's cost as well, and you're also getting to completely blank one of your opponent's forwards. Um, it's worth noting though that by playing Garnet and searching Kuchelain and then drawing yourself a card or any summon that she plays that draws your card, you are effectively milling yourself two cards, so be wary of that. Leviathan, the new Leviathan, really good card as well. So choose one forward. During this turn, the next damage dealt to it is reduced by 5,000 instead, and draw one card. If you have received five points of damage or more, all the forwards you control also gain this forward cannot be chosen uh, by your opponent's summons or abilities until the end of the turn. So that's really, really good, especially at uh, five damage, because casting Garner to then make it so all your forwards cannot be chosen by summons or abilities is awesome, and you get a card to hand. Red Mage. So obviously you can play Garnet onto the field to cast a summon, doesn't matter what summon, you can then combo that into the likes of Red Mage. There's a few cards out there where you can do something, or oh, put a break up, uh, a break up, put a backup into the break zone to be able to get an effect, and Red Mage is one of them, so you could cast just a silly little summon, something like Fairy, to activate something and draw yourself a card, but then you put Red Mage into the break zone to then break one of your opponent's forwards of cost three or less. Jagran, when Jagran enters the field, you may search for one job of princess, of course, three or less, and play onto the field. Now, obviously, Jagran normally plays into the likes of Ovalia, but maybe that's not what you're going for. You've already played Ovalia. You can also then play Garnet, who is a job princess. She isn't a summoner as of yet, uh, at which point you can then also cast a summon. Again, be wary because you are milling yourself with this. So you play Jagran, which will search you a Garnet, who will then search you a summon. And if that summon makes you uh, draw, that's three cards from your deck. Iodolus. So obviously you can cast Garnet, which will cast a summon. The summon won't be massively effective, but then you can use Iodolus if it's something you need to use again to then cast that summon a second time as well. Um, obviously at the moment there aren't a huge amount of summons that this is really worthwhile for, but you never know. You could use it along the likes of um, Bismarck. So you could use Garnet to cast Bismarck to half one of your opponent's forward power. So then use Iodolus to then half another forward's power. Unaleska, so uh, when Unaleska enters the field, choose one summon in your break zone, place it on the bottom of your deck. So obviously, as I've said before, you cast Garnet, which is then taking a summon out of your deck. You then play Unaleska to put that summon back into your deck. And then if you wanted to, I don't know, play another Garnet later in the game or flick a Garnet or just re-trigger her ability, you can then get that same summon if you wanted. Ash. If you control, uh, no, sorry, at the end of each of your turns, if you've cast three or more cards this turn, draw one card. So you could literally play Ash, play Garnet, who will then cast a summon, just go to pass your turn, you've cast three cards that turn, which point you draw another card. And if the summon that Garnet played drew, drawed you, drew you, got you a card, um, you're getting two cards to hand just from those two cards. Hope. So when an active character your opponent controls becomes dull due to, oh no, don't about that, sorry. Uh, when a dull character you control becomes active due to your summons or abilities, it choose up to two characters you control, activate them. So you play Garnet to cast Fairy with Hope already on the field. Fairy then activates a dull forward, which means you then get to reactivate two other characters. And again, you get to draw a card with Fairy. 
Okay, red 13 is a 4 CP AK with the text. If you control a category 7 forward other than red 13, red 13 gains plus 1000 power, haste, and first strike. So really, really good card. He's, I think one of the reasons it doesn't get played as much in a lot of 7 decks is because so many 7 cards have EX burst and he doesn't unfortunately, but he is still pretty strong because he only requires one other 7 forward on the field. So this is going to be a pretty uh, quick, but you know, still decent um, combo setup. So Sephiroth, obviously you could have red 13 just in the field, your opponent attacks something, you then just play Sephiroth on their turn because he's got back attack, at which point red 13 gains all the aforementioned abilities. He can then block and probably be safe, but also you've got the fact that when Sephiroth enters, you get to dull on your opponent's forwards as well. Kadage. So when Kadage enters the field, second one of three following actions. So choose one forward, dull it. That's fine. Choose up two cards from either player's breaks and remove them from the game. Also good, but choose one forward until the end of the turn. It gains a plus 2,000 power and brave. So you could obviously use that red 13. And as Kadage enters at the end of your opponent's turn, it means that red 13 will become plus 1,000 haste and first strike at the end of the turn. But also you can make him a plus 2000 and brave as well so whilst kadaj is on the field you can have it set red 13 is actually plus 3000 power brave haste and first strike pretty cool cloud uh so when a category 7 forward you control blocks it gains plus a thousand power until the end of the turn so with cloud and red 13 that means that red 13 if he blocks is actually a plus 2000 power first striker a 10,000 power uh, blocker with first strike is pretty good Tifa, and obviously this Tifa gets played in every 7 deck, but alongside Red 13, he becomes very problematic because obviously um, uh, the category 7 forwards, other than Tifa control, gain plus 2000 power and brave. So that means Red 13 becomes haste, first strike, brave, and plus 3000 power. So he's an 11,000 power first strike blocker, which is awesome. But also at damage 3, um, the category 7 forwards you control cannot be broken by opposing summons abilities that don't deal damage. So, you know. <sighs> They have to start dealing lots of damage to a very big red 13 and it has to be something um, that deals damage and if you have the likes of uh, Minru on the field as well it means that they have to deal outright 11k to get rid of red 13 when Tifa's on the field. Aerith. Who needs Minru when you've got Aerith because you know Aerith gives the Minru effect and Aerith herself is also quite awkward to break because if she's dealt damage by summoner ability the damage is reduced by 2000 instead and um, obviously she has a static Minru effect and she will also buff at 13. And Minerva. I always have to include Minerva when I can because I really like this card. At the beginning of your main phase one, let's select one of the three following actions. All the boards you control gain plus 3,000 power until the end of the turn. So red 13 will be plus 4,000 power and first strike, which is really good. Or you can just blank all your pants forwards or destroy yourself a card. Okay, Vaan. He is a 6 CP 8k forward. Uh, when Vaan enters the field, reveal the top 5 cards of your deck. Play one forward of cost 3 or less among them onto the field. Then shuffle the other cards revealed and return them to the bottom of your deck. If you have received 5 points of damage or more, perform this action twice instead. So there needs to be a little bit of clarify clarification about this, but basically what happens is that it is only one stackable ability it simply happens twice or rather the it's a replacement effect basically it means that the effect happens twice so what happens is you play van onto the field at damage five you reveal five cards you play a card from those five onto the field you then shuffle those cards put them to the bottom of your deck you then reveal a further five cards choose a card and play onto the field and then shuffle those cards and put them to the bottom of your deck so it's not a case of you reveal 10 cards and get to play two from that pool it is two pools of five uh, so they are completely separate. So if you saw, you know, hypothetically, if you saw two really good uh, forwards that you wanted to play in the first five cards, you can't do that. They have to be two separate pools. So, Yule and Ice and put Yule into the break zone. Search for one forward and put it under the top card of your deck. So that means that Van will be able to play it, provided obviously it's a three TP or less. But it's also good because Yule has no stipulation on the element you can put there. So you can put something that's super good and put it there and just ready to play. And Star Sybil, obviously using Star Sybil to play Van onto the field is really, really good because it's costing you nothing. You just break Star Sybil. Not to mention the fact that Star Sybil searches when she enters the field as well. And you can reduce her cost with card that name I forget. Uh, but yeah, ultimately just breaking it back up to play Van to play another forward, hopefully two forwards to create damage five is awesome. Killer B. So when killer when I where 
When a wind character other than Killer B enters the field, place one monster counter on Killer B and put Killer B into the break zone. Activate all the characters you control. You can only use this ability if uh, if three or more monster counters are placed on Killer B. So obviously just playing Varn and then playing two wind characters from Varn means that Killer B is then immediately put to three wind counters and you can reactivate all your characters with that. Obviously you want to make sure that you're probably in a mono wind deck with this, but that's not too hard to do. And Kagnazo, remove, uh, so when a forward other than Kagnazo enters the field, place one water counter on Kagnazo. So you, if Kagnazo is already there, you play Van to then play another forward and then play another forward, at which point Kagnazo has three counters and you can remove three to make a forward lose 8,000 power. Right, let's talk about the cards that you can actually play. So I'm going to stick to elements because, I mean, you there's no way to be able to really say what you're going to be able to play because yeah you can put a card there with yule or some other means but you don't know what the other cards are going to be i mean you can use something like leviathan to put a card there as well but again you aren't 100 certain of the cards that you are going to reveal entirely but just conjecture wise here are some really cool cards that you could be able to play so this is more talking about again how um multi-element cards the fact you have to pay with both elements is not a restriction. So let's say hypothetically you played Varn and first you revealed White Tiger C Nimbus. He comes into the field. Now you get two dull and freeze one of your opponents for uh, char uh, yeah his character yeah character. And then you bring an Ishtolo with the second trigger of the ability. At which point she has a 9 CP haste that has a mineral effect on herself. These two forwards being on the field is disgusting. One has brave, the other one has haste. And uh, one dull and free something when it enters and attacks. The other one it just has a mineral effect. It's just bleh. For paying six or just breaking a Star Sybil to play Varn to get White Tiger Lassi and Ishtola. Ugh. Uh, okay, Chocobo and Chocobo Knight, because obviously you want to have a Vine in your Chocobo deck. You don't have to, but it's just, you know, so many of the Chocobos are 3 CP. In fact, I think, like, only one forward Chocobo as of yet is over 3 CP, and that's the 4 CP one, which is still a pretty good card, but, you know, it's not essential in a Chocobo deck. So, playing Vine to then play more Chocobos, and, you know, you could play the Chocobo that plays a Chocobo that plays a Chocobo that plays a Chocobo, uh, or Chocobo Knight can search for another Chocobo to play more Chocobos. I mean, the list goes on, right? But this is also good to play alongside Killer B because, again, more wind cards, and you get to reactivate your backups and play more Chocobos if you wanted. Elphenord, or Elphino, sorry. Uh, and Forza, obviously you can't cast Forza when he enters the field, choose a forward, you do it at 7k, and also he's a 9c, uh, 9k forward as well. And then obviously Alphano, when it comes in through an ability, it means that you can search any character and add it to your hand. You could use Alize to play Alphanord, so if you re reveal Alize and you had Alphano in hand, you could play that one as well. But I'm just talking more about Alphano because obviously he can search you anything. Shulk and Zargabarth. So when Shulk enters the field, you may play a board of any element except ice, of course two or less from your hand onto the field. If you do so, your opponent discards one card from the hand. And Zargabarth has the same thing without the discard, but it can be a board of three or less. Um, obviously, Vaan can play forwards of uh, three or less as well. So, you know, you could have some two CP forwards in there, and I'd actually recommend it because there's a lot of good two CP forwards in the game now. Um, but if you were to play Vaan to then reveal Shulk, you could then play a 2CP from your hand, at which point you get to make your opponent discard a card as well. And then Zagbuff comes in, and again, you could play anything, a forward of 3CP or less that isn't ice, to then get another effect as well. So, you know, you could, I don't know, get play Falls onto the field and then deal 7k. Either way, if you had all the right cards in hand, and you revealed both Shulk and Zagabuff, you would have gained 5 forwards for playing Varn, and made your opponent discard, and whatever the forward that Zagabuff does as well. So. Galoof and Deleter. So this is where the order that forwards come in actually makes a difference. Obviously, you don't have to use Galoof. There's plenty of other forwards, and they don't have to be in Earth. But um, at damage 3, when Galoof is put from the field to the break zone, you may search for one Earth forward across two less and play it onto the field. And when Deleter enters the field, choose one forward opponent controls. You may put one of your forwards of the same cost other than Deleter into the break zone. If you do so, break the chosen forward. Mouthful. But yeah, so let's say your opponent had a forward of uh, 3 CP, you could, with the second proc of Vaan's ability, bring in Deleter, which you could then put uh, Galuf into the break zone. 
um, which would then break the three CP forward opponent controls. But then Galuf could also bring the whole search and bring in a two CP forward as well. So he could bring in something like I don't know, Shadow Lord or Kryle or Archangel to to break a doll forward. I mean, there's loads of different abilities. Also, Delita could hypothetically put Varn into the break zone as well to break a six CP forward your opponent controls. And obviously Ilua and Desh, or just Ilua. Ilua is a fantastic card, and being able to, you know, play Ilua to then use an Ilua S to then give Van Ilua and whatever other forward Van brings in as well. Um, but it's also a two CP, um, two CP, a two thousand power uh, loss on your opponent's forward if you do use her S ability. And at damage three, Desh uh, deals two thousand damage to all the forward opponent controls, and he also has first strike as well, so he's a really good ability. And you know, if you're at damage five, you can just straight up put Desh into the break zone to break one of your opponent's forwards okay dusk and viking so here's where things get a little janky and thank you uh, to my friends for helping me out uh, getting some advice on this because it's a bit of a weird play but, but yeah so basically when Van enters obviously he reveals five then he plays something then he reveals five then he plays something but if something uh when it enters the field uh, has what well, has an enter the field ability auto ability that goes on the stack after Van has resolved But something like dusk it says when dusk enters the field you may pay one water when you do so play one four across three or less from your hand onto the field so this is called a delayed auto ability so it's not until resolution that you actually pay the one water so you would let's say you revealed dusk on the first reveal he would come onto the field and then his ability would enter the stack and then on the second reveal you played something else you could, at that point, at, after Van's resolved, you then go to pay Dusk's one water. What could happen is actually the forward you were going to play through Dusk was revealed on Van's second reveal and played onto the field. At which point, you don't want to pay that water anymore because obviously, what would be the point? You can't, you legally can't play that card. So yeah, it's just bearing in mind that's just the way the card works. Um, kind of weird and janky, but you know, that's what makes this game fun. But you can do that with lots of generic cards. So, for example, Vikings. So you could hypothetically uh, Dusk and then you reveal a Viking, <laughs> at which point you draw a card or this little Viking. So when Viking enters the field, reveal the top five cards of your deck. Play one card named Viking of cost three or less among them and play onto the field and return the other cards to the deck in any order. Um, and yeah, why not just have a Viking deck? Because that would be hilarious. So you could have it Vaan reveals like this little viking and then another another of this little viking and there could just be like so many vikings in your deck and you just play constant vikings on the field kind of like chocobos but not and a lot weaker but yeah uh, just bearing in mind with Va uh, van with uh, dusk uh, that you don't have to pay the water until it comes to resolution and if you were going to play a card from hand but then it gets played off of van's uh, second trigger then no need to worry okay bigs from the very first starter sets. Here's a 2CP backup with the text, when a backup you control is put from the field into the break zone, deal a thousand damage to all the forwards your opponent controls, which seems like not a fantastic ability, but there are a few decent ways to be able to combo into some really cool things. And I think nowadays having a static deal a thousand to all the forwards your opponent controls is a lot more applicable now than it was back then. Um, Obviously, things like Minwoo still stop it from happening, but we now have things like Kuchaswal, which can mean that it does happen anyway. But something like Kane. So, um, for paying the cost to play Kane onto the field, you may put one active lightning back up your control into the break zone. If you do so, the cost of playing Kane onto the field is reduced by five. And then when Kane enters the field, choose one forward opponent controls and loses 8,000 power until the end of the turn. So, by putting a backup into the break zone, you are then triggering. Uh, bigs, which means you'll deal a thousand to all your opponents forwards and then Kane enters to minus eight thousand to something Which means that you've got a, a 9k power swing, which is pretty good not to mention the fact that you could combo the forward that um, Kane puts into the break zone into something else as well So it could be something like the uh, 3cp Fusoya, which gets you a forward back to hand as well Firion obviously if you uh, Oh, where is it? Put one back up into the break zone until the end of the turn. Fearing gains, first strike and brave. So you can use this as a defensive maneuver as well. So your opponent attacks with something. You can put something into the break zone. Biggs will then deal a thousand to opponents forwards. Fearing gains, first strike, which means that he is then effectively a 9k blocker. Oh yeah, so there you go, Fasoya. So when Fasoya enters, uh, sorry, when Fasoya is put from the field into the break zone, choose one forward from your break zone, add it to your hand. So this combined with the likes of, um, 
cane means that um, you get something back to your hand as well. And, you know, it could be something that searches you another back and plays another back up onto the field. So you're still making room to be able to play more things. Red Mage, so you could cast a summon, obviously you want to make sure to use Red Mage in your payment for that casting of the summon, but you could cast a summon, and then once you've done that you can put Red Mage into the break zone, which then deals a thousand damage to all the forwards your opponent controls, so maybe you've cast something along the lines of the 3CP Ramu, so you can deal an active forward 7k and then give a forward you control haste. Uh, then you put Red Mage into the break zone, you've broken one of your opponent's forwards, hopefully with Red Mage, then if you deal 7k to something else with Ramu, and then Biggs will actually top up that damage to 8k. Luca, so dull and uh, pay one earth and dull, put Luca into the break zone, choose one back up across three or less in your break zone, play it onto the field. Uh, so again, also really cool because you're dealing damage uh, through bigs and you're still getting to replenish the backup that you're sacrificing with Luca. And if you do something along the lines of Graham, it means that obviously Graham enters the field through the old 9K to a forward opponent controls, but with bigs that actually becomes 10K. And similarly with Dark Knight, when Dark Knight enters the field, choose one damage forward, deal 8,000 damage. So what happens here is that when Luca puts herself into the break zone, both her and Biggs will stack. So you'll want to stack it so that it goes Luca, Biggs. So then Biggs will resolve, deal 1,000 power to something. Luca will resolve, bring Dark Knight onto the field. Dark Knight will then see that there's 1,000 dealt to all the opponent's forwards and then deal 8k to something. White Mage, so obviously be able to use White Mage to deal a thousand power to all your opponent's forwards and then bring in a forward, which may be able to deal more damage to something or, you know, just bring in a really good forward. Being able to combo that with Bygun though, means that when Bygun is dealt at that 4,000 damage or more, you may put Bygun into the break zone. When you do so, deal 7,000 damage to all the forwards your opponent controls. Now the good thing about this White Mage over the Ice Devout is the fact that you can use it at any point. So it could be during your opponent's attack phase, they attack with something, say a 6,000 power forward. You can use White Mage to um, bring in Bygun. That would also deal 1,000 power to your opponent's forwards with Biggs. Bygan enters the field, you block with Bygan, you can then choose to put Bygan into the break zone as he's received um, uh, less than 7,000 or less than his power but more than 4,000 damage and that will deal 7,000 damage to all your opponent's forwards which means you've actually dealt 8,000 damage to all your opponent's forwards with Biggs and Bygan combined. Star Sybil, so obviously you can use Star Sybil to bring a big old forward, but you also get a thousand damage proc from Biggs as well. You can combine this with the likes of Orlando, and again, this depends on how you stack it, so you have to make sure you stack it right, so that it goes Star Sybil, Biggs, so then Biggs deals a thousand power damage, and then Star Sybil brings in Orlando, Orlando sees a damage forward and breaks it. You could also use the likes of um, Fina as well, uh, so Fina will deal 5,000 damage to all your opponent's forwards, so with Biggs that would actually be 6,000 power. Black Mage, so you can pay uh, a CP value and I'll put Black Mage into the break zone at cost or one summon of cost X or less from your hand without paying the cost, then return that summon to your hand after use instead of putting it into the break zone. So there's one summon in particular that I want to combo this with, and that is Mumba, because you can use Black Mage to cast the Mumba, at which point Biggs will trigger as well, and you can then deal a thousand damage to all your opponent's forwards. Then Mumba will deal, uh, deal all or deal a forward um, damage equal to his powers minus a thousand. Obviously, that'll be the thousand that Biggs will deal, which means that you have dealt a forward all of its power um, in damage. And then Mumba, Mumba comes back to hand. You can then recast Mumba to then deal a forward all its power and damage again. Obviously, you can use this with Iodolus as well. Um, so you put Iodolus into the break zone, deal a thousand power to all your opponents forwards through bigs, and then you play Mumba, again, dealing all its power in damage. And similarly with Terra as well, you can put Terra into the break zone to cast Mumba. Obviously Terra can cast a summon of four CP or less, but still, if you are breaking one of your opponents forwards, it's probably still worth it. And Teller, so you get to dull and discard one summon, put Teller into the break zone, choose one dull forward, do 3000 damage for each CP required to cast a discarded summon. So that means you can discard even a little 2 CP summon, and with Biggs on the field you'll actually be dealing 7k to a forward. If it is a 3 CP summon you're discarding with Teller, you're not actually dealing 10,000 power to a forward your opponent controls. 
and there we go folks i hope you enjoyed this week's weird and wonderful combos i thought i'd focus on some starter decks because starter decks are where a lot of people start funnily enough um, uh, people kind of find the games that they like so Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasy 9 or Final Fantasy 8 oh wait there isn't a Final Fantasy 8 starter deck yet mm -hmm. um, but still um, it's a good entry point for a lot of people so I figured I'd talk about some of those cards a little bit more and there are generally anyway some of the best cards in the game are actually from the starter decks anyway so it is a pretty good starting point anyway make sure to stay safe people and I'll see you in the next video